Siberia for decades. Don't hit the animal. The men refrain from taking soft tissue for now. Later, the mammoth will move to the ice caves in Hatanga, and scientists will take uncontaminated samples of flesh and the flora and fauna around the animal in a controlled setting. Okay. A piece of 20,000-year-old wool. A living mammoth's yellow-brown undercoat could be an inch thick and lay just below the animal's long, bristly mane. Yes, but uh, another sample, we can use, we can use this uh, large instrument. Yeah, yeah, this package. You become addict. You have this and you want this. <laughs> Once from now, when DNA samples are taken from this animal, more valuable information will surface about a little-known species. And thoughts of its revival will haunt many a dream. The end of week three sees progress, but not enough. Trying to make up for lost time, Bernard does the unreasonable, calls for volunteers for a night dig. You need much more time in Tundra to do something, and always, before to go to sleep, I prefer to solve the main question of the day. I know that if tomorrow I start this process, I lost one day, so I take my courage in my hand and I try to, to speak with my team and try to get one or two people as a volunteer because I cannot do it by myself. So I start to speak about this and uh, I was so surprised. I know that Boris will, will, will join me, of course, but I was so surprised that all the team was like one man. And for me, it gives us so much, uh, much energy that we do much more than I expected at that time. The Siberian night is unforgiving. Temperatures have plummeted to well below zero by the time the men pick up their tools. But now the end is in sight. The men know the block they've chiseled out of rock-solid permafrost is large enough to contain the entire mammoth carcass. Now they've just got to get underneath. Shattering the ice that seals one side of the block to the earth is laborious work. But separating the block from the permafrost side requires both strength and real motivation. What was very excited at that time, it's we were so close to the, to, to the end that everybody find more energy. And after four hours working in the night, I have to stop these people working because I know that if we have not enough rest tomorrow, we will have some, uh, some problem. You know what is tisan? Air tea and coffee. Simplicity rules at the mammoth camp. Work, sleep, and all they can eat. The fare is basic, fish when they're lucky, and reindeer for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Covered by a fresh deer skin, a hole in the ice provides drinking water from the Hatanga River. As the tunneling continues, a relic from the past emerges in the rubble, aquatic plants from the Ice Age. Tipped off by a foul smell under the block, the men call Deke and Bernard to check it out. At one time, Deke thinks this might have been a pond or small lake. And sometimes it smells something organic. Yeah? When you think that 
It's minimum 20,000 years old. Make more, things more exciting. What we know for sure is that it's below the carcass of the mammoth, yes. so it must be older. Uh, the same, the age, same or, age or, or older. older. So at least 20,380 yeah, yeah. years. It's possible that the ancient plants are in such good condition because they were lodged under the mammoth and couldn't rise and decay on the pond surface. It's organic material. And look how big the plant remains are. And the color even on this one, this is beautiful. You can see the, the cut on the cut, that it is a hole inside. So this is, yeah. This is, this is, these plant remains provide us a lot of new information on uh, the time the mammoth was living on the mammoth step yeah. because uh, I'm convinced of this, that those plant remains are aquatic plants. Mm -hmm. Now we have plant remains from a pond or a small lake which provide uh, new information on the vegetation or in the water during the time of the mammoth. Mm -hmm. To fuel its massive body, an adult woolly mammoth could spend up to 20 hours a day foraging for grass and sedges. But temptation often turned to tragedy when a pond so warm and rich with plants would trap a mammoth in its muddy bed. And finally, preserve him in a frozen grave. It's now some four weeks into the mammoth expedition. The Dulgans, Gennady Jarkov, and his family head toward the dig site. The Dulgan has promised Bernard that he'll return to camp when the mammoth is ready to fly. isn't measured by the hands of a clock, but in the first snows of autumn, the thawing of the river, and the gathering of the reindeer herds. The Dulgans make camp alongside the expedition site. They'll stay as long as the grazing's good. For now, they'll prepare for autumn with rituals observed by Dulgans across the time year. Packing snow against their homes seals out the cold. In a land where wood is more valuable than ivory, life is Spartan, and surviving the bitter Siberian winter is a matter of planning, skill, and luck. Stroganina, frozen fish eaten with salt, is a staple of Russian diet and fare for guests. That Bernard has sought the guidance of the Jarkov family.